Sometimes we see people do things so abhorrent that they seem to us more like animals than human beings. We're not talking about betrayal, cowardice, or treason. No, today we're talking about necrophilia. For anyone who doesn't know, necrophilia is when somebody engages in sexual intercourse with a dead body. A living person violates a dead body. Are there any crimes in this world worse than that? How sick do you have to be to even think about doing that? Today we will discuss this crime in our analysis of the film, The Corpse of Anna Fritz. Get comfortable, we're about to start. Well then, at the start of the movie, we hear what a wonderful, talented, glamorous, beautiful, and unique actress Anna Fritz is. We learn this from a news report that we hear, but do not see. We see a body being transported through the corridors of a hospital covered with a white sheet, and at the moment, I had to ask myself, could that be Anna? Unfortunately, it was. The next thing we hear from the report is that the beloved Anna Fritz was found dead after attending a party, and the body shown on the gurney was indeed hers. Pow, a hospital worker, accompanies her on her journey through the hospital. He takes her body to the morgue, where he takes a picture of her face, so he could tell his kids one day. He then sends the picture to his friends, Ivan and Javi. His friends can't believe it and want to come see Anna for themselves. Ivan and Javi visit Pau at the hospital. Ivan suggests going to the morgue to see the body. After all, it's not every day you get to see a celebrity, even if they're dead. They take a swig of whiskey to calm their nerves and go meet their hero. They go to the morgue and Pau shows them her face, but Ivan wants more. He uncovers her entire body and starts to grope her breasts. At this point, it's clear that they have already gone too far and should stop but instead they decide to do a few lines of cocaine and discuss how one would go about having sex with a dead woman, hypothetically. All of this takes place next to Anna's naked body. Ivan is the main one pushing the idea. Pow says that, in theory, having sex with a dead body is no different than ordinary sex. You just need more lubrication. Javi starts to get more and more uncomfortable and tries to steer the conversation back to something more palatable, but it's far too late for that. Ivan goes first. He has no issue with going ahead with his necrophiliac plan and gets it over with fairly quickly. He then tells his two buddies how great it was and how energized he feels by it all. After such a rave review, Pau casts aside his doubts and follows in Ivan's footsteps. And then a real miracle happens. As Pau is having his way with Fritz's body, he somehow puts so much into it that Anna opens her eyes and turns out to be very much alive. How is this possible? One possibility is that Pau has a magic penis that brings people back to life, but this is unlikely. It's more likely that Anna did not die in the first place, but fell into a lethargic sleep. This condition is a sort of deep sleep. In severe cases, the person can even appear to be dead. Their skin turns pale and cold. The pupils no longer react to light. Breaths and the pulse are almost impossible to detect. The blood pressure drops, and they do not react even to severe pain. Simply put, the patient has all the signs of death, despite actually being alive. How did Anna end up in such a state? There are a few possibilities. Lethargy can be caused by severe stress, psychological factors, head injuries, or induced by drugs. Perhaps Anna was drugged at the party and they miscalculated the dosage. It seems that the doctors were not too diligent when they checked Anna over, but that doesn't matter now. The main thing is that she is alive and can carry on with her life and career. Pow and company are probably overcome with joy that she is alive. Well, not really. They realize that they have gotten themselves mixed up in a very complicated situation and it isn't looking good for them. And now for some legal information. The Spanish Criminal Code, the film is from Spain so we will use their system, states that for the abuse of a dead body, the perpetrator can be sentenced to 12 to 24 days and a fine equating to three to six months of their salary. Overall, not such a harsh punishment. And what about the punishment for rape? Anna could not consent to intercourse as the guys took advantage of her lethargic state. In this case, imprisonment for six to 12 years. 
That's why the friends were not so pleased by Anna's resurrection. They have one foot in the grave, and they will be known as rapists. Pow starts to freak out, as he is the first to understand the gravity of the situation. Everyone will find out what they did and his life will be over. Bobby, the only one to not defile Anna's corpse, sees that Anna is alive and tries to help her. He wants to take her away from the morgue, but Ivan does not let him. A fight breaks out between them. Ivan hits Javi over the head, knocking him to the ground. Javi hits his head on the floor and starts bleeding. He is bleeding heavily and Pau goes to call for help, but Ivan stops him, pointing out that they will see Anna and they will be arrested. Their friend is fading away, and each of them begin to behave on the basis of every man for himself. Ivan takes Javi to the back room and Pau takes Anna there too. Then Pau and Ivan try to figure out their next move. Javi tries to calm Anna down. He says that he will tell the truth about what happened and help her, but he was a little too optimistic and died from his injuries and loss of blood. Ivan and Pau see what happened and go out again to discuss the situation. Meanwhile, Anna slides off the gurney and uses Javi's phone to call her father. Ivan then comes back and takes the phone, but it's already too late. Anna says that she already told her father and he is coming to get her. Then Ivan and Pau decide to take her out of the morgue. They were about ready to give up and accept their fate, but then they get a call from Anna's father on Javi's phone. It turns out that she didn't reach him and he does not know that Anna is alive. Then they take her back to the morgue, where Ivan grabs her by the neck and hits her in the face. He suggests to Pau that first they get rid of Javi's body and then dispose of Anna. He goes to find a bin to stuff his dead friend into. There's no time to be sentimental and say a long goodbye. Meanwhile, Pau uses a bandage to tie Anna's hands and legs together, but he does such a bad job that she manages to break free easily and crawls away. Pau, if you tied knots with the same vigor that you had when you were assaulting Anna, you would surely make a good sailor. Ivan comes back and sees that Anna is gone. The pair of them then go to look for her. Anna almost manages to escape, but at the last second, Ivan stops the elevator and pulls Anna out. He drags her back to the morgue. Once they have her back in the morgue, Pau and Ivan try to figure out how they can kill her without making more of a mess than they already have. They decide that the best way out is to strangle her with a bedsheet. But first they have to deal with Javi. We all know you have to clean up one murder before you start another one, it's obvious. Ivan rushes around the hospital with Javi's body. He decides on a not so elegant burial. He dumps the body in a ditch by the road. Goodbye Javi, we will remember you as a kind but indecisive man. Pau cleans up Javi's blood in the morgue and washes Anna's body. He notices that Anna has woken up again, although this shouldn't be possible no matter what. You can't take away her lust for life. Pau decides that it must be fate and leaves her in this state without saying anything to Ivan about Anna's second coming. But as it turned out, Ivan remembers that he left his card in the morgue. He goes back and sees that Anna is alive. Then Ivan lashes out at Pau and accuses him of plotting to let Ivan take all of the blame. But Anna interrupts their argument by stabbing Ivan with a pair of scissors and then stabbing Pau. The Spanish version of a happy ending. They got what they deserved. What do you think about their punishment? How do you feel about this movie? Some people say that the theme of necrophilia is just a means for discussing the broader theme of how the lines between the public and private lives of celebrities are blurred allowing each individual to feel that celebrities belong, in part, to them. What do you think about this interpretation? Write your thoughts in the comments. Good luck, and beware of hypothetical discussions of immoral acts. You never know how they will end.